might be thinking, this is a little dark. <laughs> I think it's because the powered light switches didn't get flipped on for the, for the lighting. Might that be true? <laughs> so we're going to get that going, but while we're working on that, good evening, everybody. It is so good to be with y'all. If you're joining us online, good evening. We're so glad that you're with us tonight. Glad to have you joining us. It is awesome that we live in a time that we can do internet church. Can you imagine what the disciples would have done with a tool like what, like the tools that we have? Can you imagine what they would have done to spread God's word uh, all over the world with the tools that we have available to us today? It's pretty exciting. It, uh, it challenges me up. Thank you guys for taking care of the lights. I really do appreciate it. So let's get into worship tonight. Let's expect great things. Tyson Barks is bringing the word tonight. I'm so excited for that. If you haven't heard Tyson speak before, I hope you ate before you came because you're going to need some energy that from what he's going to bring tonight. He's going to be hipping and hopping around and you're going to have to keep up with him. So I'm excited for that. Thank you for being willing to share the word. Tyson, I really appreciate it. But let's stand and let's get into worship together. Let's enter into God's presence, right? We, we would like to think that, oh, we walk in God's presence all day long. We, we stay in the spirit all day long. We pray all day long. But we all know that there's a difference between, you know, trying to maintain that, that, that daily awareness and prayer versus really entering into an atmosphere of worship. There's a big difference between those things, right? We know that. So let's enter into an atmosphere of worship tonight. Lord, we open up our hearts to you. This is your time. This is your moment. Lord, we just rest in it. Some of us just need to take that deep breath and let the tension of the day just kind of melt away because we're in the presence of, a, of the God of peace, the Prince of Peace. Lord, some of us um, need to activate our spirits right now and just begin to press in, Lord, in ways maybe that we haven't in a while. Maybe we've just got, um, maybe we're in a dry season and, uh, and, and we need to make that concerted effort to just step into your presence. Lord, wherever, however we're coming in the door tonight, I thank you, Lord, that you meet us where we're at and that you draw us constantly closer to you. Lord, we lift you up because you are awesome. You are amazing. You are to be praised in the good times and the bad. You are on your throne, Lord. You're steadfast. You're loving. You're kind. So we bless your name tonight, Lord Jesus. You ready to give the Lord some worship? Amen. Let's do it together. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Where your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glorious name blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me when the world is all as it should be 
need, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Amen. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, oh, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, because you're worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Come on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give, you give and take away. trust you, God. We trust you, Jesus. spoke it to be you were the king of kings yeah you were yeah you were and now you're reigning still and thrown above all things angels and saints cry out we join them as we sing glory to god glory to god glory to god forever just sing it to him Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Yeah. Creator God, you gave me breath so I could praise the great and Matchless name, all my days, all my days. So let my whole life be a blazing offering, a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God, yes, glory to God forever. Glory 
take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever, forever, Lord. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. You may lift our voice and sing. Glory to God, glory to God, yeah. Glory to God forever. again take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours yes god take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours we sing glory to god glory to god Glory to God forever. All the praise belongs to you, Lord. We bless your name tonight, Jesus. Just entertain his presence tonight. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. We praise you, Lord. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia.
my life belongs to you from beginning to end. Come on, sing, I'll stand. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all. We just thank you so much for just being so good to us tonight God we just love you so much God and we just worship you God with our whole being God we elevate you God in this place and in our lives Lord and we just pray Lord that you just be glorified God in and through our lives God we pray that you would continue to just mold us and make us into your image and Lord I just pray that you would use us God, I pray for, for anybody that's coming here this evening, just heavy-hearted, Lord. I just pray that they would find the peace of God, that they would find the purpose of God, that they would find the direction of God tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you are always near, and we just worship and praise you. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen, and amen. Guys, just real quick, something I was thinking about that I've that I've uh, that I've seen as a pastor um, you know talking to people and, and and specifically talking to them in the area of worship um, they will say things like well I just you know I just don't I don't feel you know I don't feel worshipful um, you know and I think that a lot of times people will associate worship with a feeling and I just want you to think about it. what I was thinking. I actually had a picture in my mind, a vision, if you will, um, of, of people. Anybody here been to the Statue of Liberty? Anybody been to, to St. Louis and seen the big arch? Anybody been to Seattle and see the, seen the, the needle? You know, any one of these places, the Golden Gate Bridge, anybody see the Golden Gate Bridge? All right. So any one of these places, what you do is you've got people, you know what I mean? All kinds of people taking pictures. You know, I was in St. Louis not that long ago, and man, we did the whole thing up and over, you know, the arch, and people were taking pictures and video, and same thing with the Statue of Liberty. Any one of these places that you go to, man, people are just, 
enamored. They're in awe. They're just like, wow, this thing, this thing is much better than a postcard, you know? And I'm just saying this, that sometimes we, you know, we don't feel like worshiping. And so therefore we don't worship. How about we just worship because the awesomeness of God? How about whether you feel like it or not? It's just like, you know what? We are in the presence of the one that created all things that have been created. Amen. Worship him just for who he is and and what, you know, regardless. And this is what I know. I know this about God, that even if you aren't thankful in your heart, if you begin to thank and have a heart of thanksgiving, you begin to count your blessings. The next thing you know, your feelings are going to match up. You're going to be like, you know what? Things aren't near as bad as as what I'm what I'm feeling like they are, because you start counting your blessings. Next thing you know, you know, you're worshiping with a thankful heart. Next thing you know, you've got thanksgiving in your heart. Amen. How many of you need that word tonight? Right. I believe that there's some that just really need that need that tonight. And so we are in the presence of a mighty God right now. And I want you to know that he is capable and able to meet you right where you are. And he's able to he's able to do what you need him to do. So this is what I feel led to do right now. Just with a heart of thanksgiving, begin to thank him right now personally for what it is that you need from him. You haven't received it yet. Thank him in advance. Thank him for giving you that peace. Thank him for healing your body. Thank him for you know what I mean for 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 saving your your child or uh, your son or your daughter or you know just whatever. But just right now, you know, thank him for a good job, even if you don't have it. Thank him in advance for it, and uh, let's see what the Lord can do. So let's just take a moment, just all over the place, verbally with your mouth. God, thank you, Lord. We thank you for taking care of of the details in our life, those things that. That, 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 that even the small things that we make big things, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've already gone before us and you're just taking care of those things. There's a lot of fear in our world today, but I thank you, Lord, right now that you are the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. That you are, um, you know, the one that, 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 that we build our life upon, the, the strong foundation. Hallelujah. That we don't have to be fearful because God, you know what? You didn't give us a spirit of fear. There's a lot of people worried about, you know, death and dying and things like that. I just remind myself and everybody else in here and anybody that's online that you know our end from our beginning. And there's nothing that's going to happen, you know, too soon or too late. I just really believe that, God, as we put our trust and our faith in you. Hallelujah. Lord, for those that are discouraged by sin tonight, God, I pray the peace and the forgiveness of God. In fact, we just say thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness that comes through the cross of Jesus Christ. To those that ask and believe, they will receive it in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for that. And God, we just pray that you just be edified today and lifted up in this place in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord just a hand clap just real quick. Guys, go ahead and greet some folks here real quick. We'll let Tyson get get set up and ready to go. We've got a good, good night planned. He's been prepping and he's got a good word for us tonight. I believe it. Tyson, appreciate you, man. bounce off what, what Pastor T said about worship. You know, uh, when we're in war against the enemy, we worship. And uh, the devil hates worship. And uh, you see me up here, you know, I'm just worshiping God. I feel like I'm the audience of one. I feel like I'm all by myself. You know, if, if, 
if Jesus said, well, two more are gathered, he's there. And when the king, the, the king is here because two more, there's two, two more people here. So I'm worshiping him. I love being in the presence of God. And uh, it's funny as <laughs> I, served, I was atheist for 28 years. And I remember going to clubs and just dancing like an idiot and, and had no idea. And I never heard anybody say, oh, stop, stop dancing or, turn, or DJ, turn the music down. But sometimes I go to churches and, I'll go, and I get up here dancing and I'm just praising God and I'm crying and I'm acting crazy. And, and some people are like, is that a show? No, because I love Jesus Christ. I know what it's like to be on the losing team for 28 years. In the last seven years, I've been on a winning team. I've been preaching the gospel for seven years and I feel like I haven't even started. And so that's why I worship the way I do because I just appreciate his presence. And I know that Jesus is here. I know he is here. And uh, um, before I get started, I want to tell you a few things that God's done in my life. And we'll talk a lot about David. And, and that's the story we're going to talk about. But, you know, David was anointed as king when he was just a boy. But he didn't become king until he was a man. He got anointed king, put oil on his head, and then he went back and took care of the sheep. <laughs> you have no idea how bad I want to come to church, and sometimes I can't. I know, I know the, God, the calling God's put on my life. And what does he do? He goes and puts me back alone with some cows. But he spends so much time with me. You can't even imagine the things God's taught me behind some cows. Just me and him, worshiping him. How you see me worship here, that's how I worship behind cows. I'm thanking God all the time. I'm praising God all the time. And he's constantly teaching me, teaching me, teaching me. So uh, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more what's happened in my last few months of my life, a few weeks of my life, what God's been doing. It's literally, I can't even, I can't even explain the gratitude I have for God. So it's like almost three months ago, I went on a fast, a five-day fast. And I kept hearing the scripture pop up everywhere I go. Oh, no, man, nothing but to love him. Oh, no, man, nothing but to love him. And I know God was calling me to get out of debt. Well, I was in six-figure debt, me and my wife. And so I'm like, all right, whatever, God, whatever you tell me to do, we'll do it. So I fasted for five days. And my wife said, why are you fasting? I'm like, I want to be out of debt more than I want food. And, uh, and I want our marriage to be better. And she kind of got flustered. She's like, our marriage is great. I'm like, but it can always be better. So I went on that five-day fast. And at the end of the five-day fast, uh, (laughs) God said, sell your house. And we had no desire to sell our house, none. And he says, I'll get you out of debt in 30 days. Now, if you ever sell something, you know it takes longer than 30 days to get that to work it process out. So anyways, we're in the process of selling it. And so people... We're lying. Some people were high up to a lot of money. We're trying to make me us look bad. And the realtor's like, oh, freaking out. I'm like, I'm not worried about it at all. God bless them. She's like, God bless them. No, you need to talk to them right now. I'm like, no, I'm going to pray for them. Anyways, <laughs> somebody came in with a cash offer. Not only did God get us out of debt, and it was exactly, and it wasn't 29, 28 days, it was exactly 38 day, 30 days, we was completely debt free. Everything's paid off, and I owe nobody nothing. I mean, that's only God, you know, six figures, almost $100,000, and God's is like this. It's funny, it's, it's, like, it's like, before I fasted, I was sitting in my in-law's house, and I heard God clear as day, do you want this house? I said, no, my wife really wants this house. She talks about it ever since we've been married, about buying her parents' house. And I said, yes, Lord, I want this house. It's a really big house. It's perfect for our family and a couple acres and a shop. And, uh, and so when we went to sell our house, we didn't know where it was going to go. I had no idea. And then and God put it on my heart. We're going to move in with my in-laws and then eventually buy their place and I can take care of them. I could take care of them and honor my in-laws. And I remember when my dad was dying, Pastor T came up to me and he's like, you're honoring your dad by taking care of your dad. And so I'm, I'm taking care of my in-laws. We live there. 
They don't charge us any rent. We're saving tons of money. We're putting money in savings. And, and, uh, and my father-in-law, he gets sick sometimes, and the doctor told him no salt. You need to stay away from salt. So it's funny how God will work with you in certain things. And, and so I did a bunch of study on salt. <laughs> and salt can't lose its flavor. I mean, you can crunch it up, smash it up, put it in water. It's going to taste like salt. Salt is salt. So I was reading at work, uh, Matthew 5.13, and Jesus says, we are the salt of this earth. If it ever loses its flavor, where would it go? And I'm like, I just know, I just studied about salt, and salt can't lose its flavor. So you're going to have to explain to me this, God. And this is what he showed me. So I bought some salt. And uh, just say that's about the salt that we have, okay? And then this is how God explained it to me. This is pepper. So as I'm thinking about my father-in-law and all these things God's doing in my life, I'm like, okay, God, salt can't lose its flavor. And this is what he told me. If you have two pounds of pepper and you have one ounce of salt and 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 you mix it together, and you mix it together, you won't be able to taste the salt. Because the, the, the pepper has mixed in and took over. And he told me, that's what it's like in the world. Don't let the world take over and contaminate you like the pepper did. That's what I'm talking about when salt loses its flavor. So I'm just saying this. If you spend time with God, he'll tell you simple like, little things like that as you're going through your life. You know, um, and then another thing God's been doing in my life. This is like two months ago. I, I hated TikTok. I heard nothing good about TikTok. I didn't want to be on TikTok. Then God's like, "You need to spread. You need to use that to spread the message about me." Okay, ten thirty-second videos. Two months later, over sixty thousand likes, over forty thousand or four thousand followers, and I don't even know what I do. Like. I just post these little messages about Jesus. And next thing you know, it's just blowing up on fire. You know, that's not me. Tyson's not that smart. It's all Jesus, you know. But I'm just willing to be used by him to share his word because I know what he's done for me, he can do for anybody. And uh, <clears throat> so last week, I'm driving down my car down Overland by the new Mr. Gas. And Gas says, you need to go get $100 out of the ATM. And I was in a hurry. I did not want to do it. So, but I did. And uh, I was like, okay, I went to the gas station, went to the ATM, grabbed 100 bucks out, and, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? And so I just drove out back. And I drove out back, and, I, and, and God said, stop. So I hit the brakes. And I look around, and there's a car parked, and I could tell there's somebody in it. I don't know if it was a woman or a guy or what. And she's in there, and I'm sitting there for 30 seconds, 60 seconds. God's not saying nothing. This is real awkward. This lady probably thinks I'm going to rob her. <laughs> so, so she gets out of her car, and she's like this. And I just put the money out like this, like, here, I'm not here to rob you. I'm just here to give you 100 bucks. And I said, here's 100 bucks. And she just tears rolling down her face. And, I, and, and she, says, she says, what? I said, God told me to give you 100 bucks right now, and he stopped me from whatever I'm doing. So... She's like, you have no idea. She's like, I just found out an hour ago that I arrest took $387 out of my account. And I just prayed that God give me 100 bucks to get through the week. She's like, I don't even think I finished the word amen and you show up. That's why I'm up here. It's to tell you, God hears your prayers. He knows what you need. He says, he'll answer your prayer before you even finish it. You know, it's just, it's just so amazing. I love being used by God, you know. And that's why I'm up here is just to serve God and tell people about Jesus and what he can do for your life. And he loves talking. He does talk. But you got to go in the secret place and shut up and let him talk, you know. Um, but um, let's play my first song. Don't tread on me and I'll explain why I'm playing it. (laughs) I love that song. 
Because what Pastor T said earlier is about fear. You know, I fear God, that's it. A lot of people, a lot of people like fear death. I'm telling you, there's something worse than death and that's hell. And uh, I believe a lot of things that we fear, we attract. Like Job said, the thing I feared the most came upon me. Listen, if I fear God, maybe I attract God, you know? Because he's the boss. You know, whatever happens, he's allowing for our purpose. And uh, there's a couple quotes, and I'm sure some of you guys might know them, but they're from pastors and preachers two to 400 years ago. And uh, one of my favorite, my favorites is is, uh, John Bunyan. Not Paul Bunyan, but John Bunyan was born in 1628. And he said this. He says, I often find myself laughing at the devil. (laughs) <laughs> because what can he do, you know? He's, he's, he's God's devil. He can only do what God allows. And then uh, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, he was such an amazing man of God, and uh, he didn't fear the devil. And one night, it's, he was telling a story one night, he didn't have any electricity in his house, and he's just sleeping, and he felt an evil presence come in his house. And he gets up and he says he lights a candle and he looks and he's in a hallway and the other side was the devil. And he blows the candle out. It's all, it's just you. <sighs> he goes back to bed. That's the confidence that we should have in Christ, the boldness that we should have in Christ. We don't need to fear anything else. We just need to fear the Lord because it's the beginning of wisdom. And I hear people, somebody say, you're laughing at the devil. That's crazy. Even, even, even Michael, the archangel in Jude 9 wouldn't even argue with the, de- with the devil or, or whatever. Well, I'm not an angel. I'm a son of the living God, and God's given me that authority. So, well, I'm up here as I'm tired of seeing the devil taking advantage of people and people in depression and bondage and stuff like that. And I'm up here to preach those bondages off and break those chains in the name of Jesus Christ because he, once you know who you are, you know who you're not, and you're not that depression, you're not that anxiety, you're not that stuff you deal with. And, and uh, that's what I'm saying. It's just just fear God because he is amazing so so now we can get to the, the sermon so we've talked about uh, last Wednesday nights we talked about a lot of gifts and uh, my gift my gift is I want to talk about is mercy and the reason why I want to talk about mercy and being cheerful about it is is I believe that's the gift that God has given me and it wasn't easy to understand it sometimes, and sometimes it was really hard until God, until God showed, me, showed me how to, how to walk in mercy and how to do it right. There's a right way. And so why I'm sharing this, why I'm talking about mercy is because I'll share you a story of what happened um, like 10 days ago. So um, it was a guy nights out. I was coaching football after coach. After coaching football, I took some of the, the boys out to dinner. And it was 8.30 at night. It was pretty late. And I felt bad because me and these, and these boys I took to dinner were the only people in the restaurant. And this lady was really mean. I mean, she was not nice. She, our waitress was really, I mean, just wasn't good. And I'm like, no tip. God says, $100 tip. So, so at the, end, at the end of our meal, she comes up and just throws the thing on the table. And she's really mad. She's really distressed. So I says, hey, I said, hey. God told me to, to give you a $100 tip, and I don't know why, but he just told me to give you a $100 tip. And she just starts bawling and crying and crying and crying. She's like, well, you said God told you to do it? I said, yeah. She's like, I don't deserve this, sir. I was so rude to you. I was so mean to you and your kids. I said, that's mercy. Whether I think you deserved it or not, God told me to give it to you. And she says, you have no idea what you did. You just changed my life. My whole life on this moment. And I said, why? What are you talking about? She says, you know, I've only been a Christian for a week. She's like, I prayed last night. I was $180, had $180 and like 18 cents I owed to the power bill. They're going to shut my power off. And I was praying, 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 God, please, tomorrow at work, can you give me $180 just to pay my bill? She says that 830, 8.30, you're the only people here. I had $81 in my pocket. She said, I know I heard God tell me he would give me that 180 bucks. And I felt like he lied to me. 
then you show up, last customer here, and you give me 100 bucks, I have exactly $181 to pay my bill. You know, me being obedient and just want to and plead, and, and please God and listen to that small voice, how many people would have, if she would have thrown your stuff on the table and not get your water or not get your kids drinks and be late for everything, how many people of this world would have said, no tip for you and just, and just cursed her out? I don't know what that woman was going through, but God did. God showed me mercy, so mercy has to flow through me. Because I know the mercy that God has shown on me that I do not deserve any of it. I don't deserve nothing God has given me, but he continues to show me mercy. That's why I'm here to preach mercy. Mercy. And we all should show mercy, but certain people do have the gift of mercy. And, maybe, and I know some of you do, and, I'm a, and at the end you'll understand like, what that gift is and, and, how, and how to act in the spirit about it. Um. She, it was funny. She started laughing at the end. She's like, I should ask for $1,000. I was like, no. <laughs> you know, but the look on her face, you know, and it was in front of these kids that didn't even, the, one of the kids I took to dinner, you know what his stepdad told me? He's, he's, he's 11 years old. And he called me and he says, uh, he says, Tyson, I respect you as a man. I don't know how to be a dad. This kid's getting in trouble. Will you take him to football practice and will you pay for him and help guide him to be a better man? Because your son, your son is such a good influence on my son. And every person he hangs out with gets in trouble. I said, absolutely. I pick him up from, from, from school, take him to football practice. Two hours later, I buy him dinner and then take him home. This boy's 11 years old, never experienced God in his life. I brought him to church one time, this church. Do you know what he said? All his Facebook posts have crosses on them. Everywhere's crosses now. And this is what he said. <sighs> he says, I've never sung my heart out so, so loud for anything in my life. But just back there, teaching our kids about Jesus and me being an example and teaching about Jesus. He says, I've never sung my heart out for Jesus, like for something any in my life, but I just wanted to sing so loud. Do you know? I didn't, I didn't want to take that kid. I don't, I've got so much other things I feel like I could be doing. Do you know? But when God tells me something, I just got to do it, whether it's an inconvenience or not. But what is that little boy going to think now? Now he goes to school, he's writing crosses, he's talking about Jesus. His, his, he's got Snapchat, 11 years old, which I don't agree with, but, but everything he talks about is Jesus, you know? I mean... Because he'd been to this church one time, because I, I says, you know what, my, my, my 11-year-old son is an example for him. Anyways, um, I don't know how I got in that direction, but there you go. Uh, but that's just the power of just letting God, you know, take over in your life. And, you know, showing that kid mercy when he's acting out, you know, and loving on him. And so... Uh, Let's go to slide two. The definition of mercy. <laughs> mercy can be defined as compassion or for, forbearance shown especially to an offender or two subjects to one's power and also blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion to be, to be at someone's mercy indicates a person being without defense against someone. Then Abraham Lincoln said this, and I love Abraham Lincoln. He says, I've always, I've always found that mercy bears richer fruits than strict justice. How many of you know that's true? You know, if I, if I was to act strict to that woman, how much that would have hurt her, hurt her, you know? Oh, I heard God, this guy screwed me out 100 bucks, God's a liar, you know? Instead of showing her something that my flesh wanted to show her, I just obeyed and showed her mercy. And look what it done. Now, let's go to my third slide, Romans 12, 6, 8. Now, this is, this is the part where the gifts, where I picked this gift from. This is having, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them if, if prophecy in, in pro, pro, proportion, proportion to our faith is service in our serving. The one who teaches in, this, in his teaching 
the one who exhorts in his exhortations, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And that's the last one, mercy with cheerfulness. Now, we're going to talk about a story in the Bible, and it's the perfect example. And I know this is what God wanted me to talk about, because it's funny, with Dr. Dave, is he was asking me like 11 o'clock one night, what's the topic and what's this? And I opened my Bible, it's 11 o'clock at night, me and my wife are laying in bed, and I'm like, got my eyes barely open, and I take a picture. And my wife saw, why do you say this? Why do you talk about this scripture? And I'm like, what did you just say? She had no idea I was taking a picture of the scripture of the Bible, and it's exactly uh, Romans 12, uh, 6. And, and so I'm like, that's crazy, you know? She's like, wow. And then I go to Dr. Dave's house to talk about this, this sermon, and I forgot my Bible, and, and I just opened the Bible. And Dr. Dave was telling me about this story in, in 2 Samuel 9, and uh, I'm like, Dave, did you bend these pages to this, to this book so I'd open it and this would be? He's like, no. And it was exactly that page, that chapter that I opened the Bible up to, but way before he even said anything. So it's just funny how God will show off, and, and I just know that's where we're supposed to go with this. So the story is in 2 Samuel uh, 9, but uh, let's go to my fourth slide. And I'm going to explain to you about who King David was, Jonathan was, and Saul was. And we'll talk a little bit about mercy. And mercy is showing kindness and compassion. Grace is not getting what we deserve. Mercy is getting what we do not deserve. It is always extended to those who have no right to expect anything from us. Uh, my fifth slide, please. Okay, here we go. Saul was Israel's first king. He did not follow God's commands, acted foolishly. Samuel uh, informed Saul that the kingdom would not extend through his legacy because of his disobedience. Jonathan, Saul's first son, was aware that he was not going to be the next king after his father, Jonathan, was a mighty warrior in Israel. So the people of Israel really wanted a king, so God gave him Saul. I think most of us know that, but just in case. Um, let's go to my sixth slide. And we're going to go ahead to, an, to another scripture. This is Jonathan speaking about Saul, his dad. But if my father intends to harm, he's talking to David. But if my father intends to harm you, may the Lord deal with Jonathan be so ever so severely. If I do not let you know and send you away in peace, may the Lord be with you as he's been, as he's been with my father. So, so Jonathan's saying here real quick that the Lord was with his dad Saul. But it also says that the spirit left Saul after he was disobedient. Um... But then he goes on saying, but show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as, lo as long as I live so, that I so I may not be killed. And do not cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So what happened back in the day was whenever there was a king and a new king came over, that king would kill the rest of the family's legacy so that they would never try to come back. Well, Jonathan knew that. So Jonathan was telling David, please don't kill me and show me kindness. Well, Jonathan was David's best friend. And uh, Jonathan was David's best friend. And uh, David cried on Jonathan's lap. And, and just to have another person be so compassionate with God is, is truly an amazing. And I, I can honestly say I do have a friend like that. And his name is Eric. And uh, I can understand how brotherhood is because I cannot call anybody else at six o'clock in the morning, wake him up, tell him scripture. He's like, dude, that's awesome. You know? Or he'll call me, you know, wait, he'll, he'll call me, he knows I'm at work at 4.30, he's at five o'clock rolls around in the morning. Dude, I've been reading this about God. He has the same passion I do for God. And it's truly amazing to have such a friend like that where you can just go back and forth feeding off God. Well, hey, we have the same best friend, the Holy Spirit, you know? 
And that's the kind of relationship I believe that David had with Jonathan. And so, so David was honoring uh, Jonathan. And we're going to show how that plays out. Um, let's go to uh, seven. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. And we're just going to read the whole thing. Oh, I forgot to tell my wife thank you for this. First of all, I kind of put this together. But my wife's like, no, you can't do that stuff. You got to, I put the whole scripture on one thing. And my wife said, hey, nobody's going to be able to read that. Nobody. So thank you to my wife for helping me with this. Uh, this is in 2 Samuel 9. This is the perfect story of why I want to go with mercy. And uh, this is David talking. It says, I, David, asked, is there anyone still left at the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him to appear before David. And the king said to him, are you Ziba, your servant, he replied. Next slide. The king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul whom I can show God's kindness to? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. So before we go on, um, Jonathan had a son. So his best friend had a son. And uh, his name was uh, uh, Meshibotheth. And uh, Meshibotheth was five years old when Jonathan died, when his dad died, and his grandpa died, Saul. And, and the, 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 person, the lady who was taking care of him knew that, that David could kill his, his whole legacy, all the people in his household. So the, the lady picked him up and she dropped him and it paralyzed him from his legs, legs down. So, so just so you know, that's, what, that's the kind of story of uh, Meshavatheth. And uh, um, anyways, there is still a son, in John, son of Jonathan. He is crippled of, of both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is in the house of Markur, son of Amiel, in uh, Lodabar. So the king David had him brought to Lodabar uh, from the house of Markur, son of Amiel. Next one. When Meshebetheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed to pay him honor. So it says Meshebetheth bowed in front of of King David. So, listen, he didn't, his legs didn't work. So I can only imagine him crawling on his butt or whatever, how he was, and then he, he showed honor to the king and bowed down to him. Ziba didn't do that. Okay? Um, David said, Meshebetheth, your servant, he replied, don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will always eat at my table. Meshebetheth bowed down again and said, what, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? So Meshebetheth told King David, what do you want with a dead dog like me? What is he saying by that? He says, I'm not living right. You know, I'm a dog. What do you want with me? Well, there's another story in the world where a lady was asking Jesus for something. And, and Jesus says, I'm, the food is not for the, for the dogs. And, and, she, and, and she replied with this, even the dogs eat the crumbs off the master's table. So what, why? Jesus called her dog because she's, not, she's living like the world. But she said, even the dogs eat the, the crumbs off the master's table. What she's doing is she's humbling herself, just like he's doing. He's humbling himself and acknowledging that he is the king. She's acknowledging he's the king. And Jesus replied to that woman, your faith has made you whole. She was living like the world. He was living like the world. But if you acknowledge that, that you've not been, not been living right and you acknowledge that he is king, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what pleases God. So this is kind of a similar story. Let's go to slide 10. Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons 
and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for and Meshavatheth's grandson of your master will always eat at the, my, my table. Now, Ziba, can you imagine being in Ziba's mind right now? I'm the one that told you about Meshavatheth. Now I have to serve him, my 15 sons, and my 20 servants. Hey, that'll work. That's a pretty good team. But I can't imagine what was going through Ziba's head. He's like the adversary. Man, this guy's been living like the world. I've been in this palace. And, and this guy is just not living right. And, and I have to serve him? And so let's go to the next slide. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Meshavatheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Meshavatheth had a young son named Micah, and the members of Ziba's household were servants of Meshavatheth. And Meshavatheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was crippled in both feet. Let's go to my next slide with the pictures. So there's some pictures that I just found of Meshavatheth bowing down to King David. Now, what makes this story so cool is that King David was showing mercy to somebody he didn't even know, was showing love to somebody he didn't even know because of somebody he loved. Because of Jonathan, the one David loved Jonathan, he was showing respect and honor to somebody he didn't even know, maybe wasn't even worthy of it. Does that remind you of us? God, God's showing us mercy and grace because of Jesus Christ? It's such a powerful story because, because David is, is, is honoring his oath what he made to Jonathan. I will show kindness to your family. So because he loved Jonathan so much, he gave so much mercy to his son he never even knew. I can only imagine what's going through Meshavatheth's head. At five years old, I don't think he ever knew his dad very well. The only thing I think Meshavatheth ever knew of his dad is what the stories he heard that his dad was best friends with King David, a, a man of God. So to me, I can relate this story is because of somebody, we can have mercy on somebody we don't even know. So I can have mercy on somebody I don't even know because I love Jesus Christ so much. That's kind of what I want to say to bring through this story is that's what King David's kind of doing, you know. Ziba, Ziba came to uh, King David, didn't even bow or nothing. But Shebetheth is crippled and got on his face in front of King David. That's why I come up here and worship is because I know who's here. I'm bowing before the king and I love Jesus Christ and I'm honoring him. And... Um, Let's go to my next slide. Yeah, here we go. Your gift is what come natural to you. <laughs> so I didn't really know that I had the gift of mercy until years later because, because I just didn't understand it. I didn't, I didn't understand, you know, a lot of things about how people treated me after I give them mercy, you know, and I believe that God will show you how to love by putting hard to love people in your life. Um, having a gift but not walking in the spirit. So this is, this, is, this, is what, this is what God spoke to me today. So um, my family, my family always called me for years asking for money and they're just doing me wrong and I'm consistently showing mercy, consistently doing it. They keep, they keep taking advantage of me but my heart hurts because after I hang out with Jesus, my heart hurts for what his heart hurts for. And so I'm like, man, this guy showed everybody mercy. I just got to love everybody. And my family was taking advantage of me. They were taking advantage of my mercy. And I just, I was frustrated. I was just really frustrated. And you ever heard that saying, um, 
I, it's, it's a curse that I got a big heart. That's because you don't know how to walk in the Spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, you're not walking in the Spirit and you have mercy. It's to be so merciful to people and they'll keep taking advantage of you. And I'm going to tell you what God spoke to me today. So, well, a couple years ago when I was met my wife and I just kept giving them money, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars a month to my family members. And they just keep just doing the same thing. And one day, this is when I realized I had the, the gift of mercy and God told me this. He says, you're in my way. He wanted to do a work, but I was in his way. I was enabling them by giving them and giving them, and I was in their way. And this is what he told me. He said, did I deliver you? Did I get you out of your suffering, or did I deliver you through your suffering? But you keep giving to them, and they keep taking advantage of you. You have to realize and have discernment when to stop so I can get in and they can be desperate enough for deliverance. Because it wasn't, it was like a dog, it's like, it's like, it's like this, the best way I can explain it. You know how you're sleeping at night and you kind of go to the bathroom and you're like, I'll hold it, I'll hold it, I'll hold it. Well, you don't sleep for two hours and you find the pain gets bad enough, you just go. Like, that's what it's like. You got to get so uncomfortable you know, and I was enabling them and keep giving them and showing them mercy over and over again. And I was still nice to them. But every time they'd call me and they would ask for things and I'd just cry because I'm like, no, God told me no. God told me no. God told me no. And I was kind about it. But I had to get to the point that I had discernment and I was walking in the spirit to get to a point where I'm like, you know what? God, you got to take over. Look, I had mercy. I was giving more, but I was enabling them to keep doing the same thing. They were just comfortable enough not to do anything and treat me the right, wrong way. But they were going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it until God told me to stop. I wasn't getting in his way. And then I remember, you know, all the times I suffered, I feel like God wasn't there. This sucks. Why am I, why didn't he just get me out? And God says, I delivered you through the pain. And you know what? I tell you this. Those family members that I quit, that I quit enabling him, they got so desperate, they start coming to church in Boise. But if I would have kept giving them and giving, they never would have been to a point where they were so desperate, they would have went and found something else. You know, I, would, I hate to say this, but Christ was my last resort. He was my last thing I went to, before when, and I gave my life to Christ. And my family members, as much as I heard them see, hurt me, to having mercy of a big heart, it hurt me to see them suffer. God told me to allow it, and that's how I got discernment, is knowing when to allow it and when, and when to help. And I see a lot of that with people nowadays. It's just like, I've just cursed the big heart every time. I just get hurt so bad. I just want to help people. I'm just getting hurt and getting hurt and getting hurt. I'm telling you this, walk in the Spirit and get to know God. Because there's a big difference between helping people and them taking advantage of you and then then somebody that's really rude to you and then blessing them. If I wasn't walking the spirit, I can guarantee this, I wouldn't have given that waitress a hundred bucks. I would have stiffed her and walked away and told nobody to go to that place again. You know? But that's why it's so important to walk in the spirit so you can know how to use the gift that God has given you. And as my life plays over, as I grow and I learn more and I learn more as my walk in Christ, I know, I know how to be merciful and I know when to say no. And, and because, because to me, there's a thing about mercy. I, I feel like I, I just feel like after I read the Bible, after I get done reading it, I don't want to curse anybody out. I don't want to gossip. I don't want to do anything. Like, you know, I my heart wants to be like Jesus's heart and I feel for what he feels for. And, and sometimes, and there's a scripture in the Bible, like the more you know, like the more knowledge you have about God, the more like you kind of grieve, like you see people hurting and you see people like just going the wrong way and it's like on a self-destruction mission. And to me, I just... It's me having a heart of mercy, wanting to help everybody. And God tells me, no, it really hurts me. Sometimes I just cry. I'm like, oh, just Lord, let me give them, let me give them something. Let me go out and help them. No, because you're just going to enable them. 
And especially it was really hard when my family would call in and, and I'd had to tell them no. But thank God that I listened to him because he knows how to reach them where I don't. He's real good at God, being God, you know? And so, so it's so important to me to tell you is to get in a secret place. Walk, that's where he's at. He says, I'll meet you in a secret place. And, and, and have that fellowship with him. Because he's a friend and you can't have a friend without fellowship. And be intimate with him. And, and, and he'll lead you. I'm telling you, God speaks more clearly. More, you'd be surprised how clearly he speaks sometimes. Um, I'll tell you one incident that just shook me for like four or five days. I could drop it in my knees. It made me cry how clearly God speaks sometimes. I'm always dancing at work. People think I'm crazy, but I am crazy. But about Jesus, and I'm just, sit, I'm just sitting here saying, Holy Spirit, I love you more. Jesus Christ, I love you more. And I say, Father God, I love you more. And then I said this. I said, God, you said, all things are possible for those who believe in Christ Jesus. Is it possible that I love you more? And I was working inside a cow, and I'm just so happy, full of joy. And then I heard him clear as day. He says, were you willing to give up what I give up? No. It, it shook me to my core so much. I, I just, I don't know. I just can't explain the feeling I felt. I don't love him more than he loves me. I'm not going to give up my son for anybody. And so, to, so when he spoke that to me, like four or five days, I was like speechless. I'm like, you know how long for years I've been telling people I love God more. I love him more than he loves me. And then to hear him say that, it was really humbling for me. I mean, I'm afraid to even say I love God more than he loves me. I don't want to say it anymore because I'm not willing. If I do love him more than he loves me, then I have to give up what he gave up. And I'm not willing to do that. I'm just, that's how much God loves us so much. And that's why I'm up here, is to confess my love for Christ. And I pray that you could experience him the way I experience him. And, uh, and the last one, God's gifts are not only for you, but to flow through you. And then my last one, and I'll play a song after this. But my last, there we go. So here's a little test for you guys. Let's see who can get this right. There's three things in yellow. One of them is not scripture. Does anybody know which one that's not scripture? The one that's not scripture, it says God's mercy is bigger than any mistake we will ever make. The rest of them, it says mercy triumphs over judgment. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now, as we play this last song, it's kind of long, but I want us to self-reflect on mercy and our gifts through this message when you hear this song. And I'll tell you why I want you to self-reflect. Because there's one thing the devil doesn't want you to do. He doesn't want you to self-reflect. Because the devil always tells you you're right when you're wrong. And I've had to learn that the hard way. In an argument, I'm right, I'm right. Yeah, you're right, Tyson, you're right. That's what he always tells me, you're right. Go attack him, go say this, go say that. You know what, then I, then I, I come back and I, and I go in my prayer room and I start self-reflecting. What could I have done better? What could Tyson do better? How could Tyson love more? How could Tyson forgive easier? Am I wrong for saying that? It doesn't matter what the person does to me. I'm responsible for how I act and how I respond. So as we play this song, I just want you to sit there and think and reflect. Okay, how would I handle the situation better? If there's somebody that's causing me problems, am I envious of somebody, am I jealous of somebody, am I bitterness towards somebody, and self-reflect and... and and think of God's mercy, what he's shown us, and what we should be showing other people. So, I don't know how long that message was, but that was from my heart. And, uh, and uh, 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm, up, I'm just thankful for Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful that he saved somebody like me. You know, there was a person, he was, he's a Christian, and he's like, ah, it's so hard on himself. I'm like, quit beating yourself up. Jesus was beaten, so don't beat yourself up. He was beaten for you. Quit being so hard on yourself. If he said he died for while we were yet sinners, if he loved us enough while we were sinners, why would he stop loving you now that you're his son? Just like Pastor T was saying earlier, if you make a mistake, listen, ask God forgiveness. He forgives you and move forward. Don't, when we live with regret, we're saying is Jesus, your death wasn't good enough. Jesus didn't die so we could live in shame. He died so we could walk boldly, you know, not arrogantly, but boldly. Because he did give us the authority to walk over that devil and to show people that there is a living God and we do have authority and we do have power in his name. So, let's play the video. Love you. Wow, how many of you are thankful for the mercy of God? So good. Let's put our hands together for that incredible, incredible word tonight. Thank you so much, Tyson, for using your gift, man. So good. Uh, just real quick, uh, before we uh, dismiss, you can give online or you can give on the way out. also want to encourage you men. We've got men's breakfast this Saturday, 9 o'clock till 10 o'clock. And we're going to be bringing to a close the series that we are in. So make sure that you and your families are here. Thank you so much for coming out on a Wednesday night. Let's give God one more hand clap. And uh, let's go get our kids. God bless you guys and thank you. Be safe.